Welcome everybody to my very first campaign playing through on Crusader Kings 3. Crusader Kings 2 was the very first game I ever played on my channel almost four years ago now and I'm excited for this game. I've been looking forward to this one for a long time like a lot of you have and my gut told me that I wanted to play through and try to unite Ireland. It just seems like a natural thing to do because you have all these independent kingdoms and it's just such an easy kind of way to settle into the game. But then I noticed that a lot of my fellow YouTubers, a lot of guys that I'm friends with, that's what they're doing. So I wanted to try and give a different experience. So I'm gonna go for Wales. Uh, my wife and I both have roots in South Wales. Uh, my wife's maiden name is actually a South Welsh name, it's Watkins. And so it seems like a natural place for us to, uh, to start. And so we're gonna start as Prince Howell. Uh, and we are going to try to unite Wales first, and then we'll see where the game takes us. Uh, I may go into uh, Britain, or I may cross the ocean, uh, cross the sea there, and go after parts of Ireland. It's just going to depend on what happens, especially with the uh, the Vikings and the raiding that's happening there. And of course, we're going to have King Alfred the Great in Wessex that's going to be trying to unite England. Uh, so we're going to try to beat him to the punch on that if we can. I don't know what's going to happen. We're going to have to follow the story. So let's dive in. I've got maybe five or six hours into the game now, so I'm starting to feel a little more comfortable uh, with the changes that have been made since Crusader Kings 2. Uh, for the most part, you know, the, the way the game works is the same. There's just some little things. And so be patient with me, bear with me as I figure my way through some of the things I haven't figured out yet. I love the new uh, lifestyle that you choose. This is your way that basically you level up. This is the RPG element to the game. And th that's what really this game is about people. It's about people and relationships rather than nations. Um, and, and that's how nations were in the feudal times. It was much more about families than it was about borders and uh, nations as we understand them today. So I am going to focus on Marshall just because early on we're going to probably be at war and fighting a lot. Uh, so it's going to be important for us to be able to uh, to build ourselves uh, militarily. So uh, I think I'm just looking at the different options that are available to us. Uh, I think we're going to go with strategy focus to start. We may switch that at some point, but that's what we're going to go with for now. We also have an unmarried heir. Uh, and we, uh, my own character is not married. So uh, I like to go with the most powerful allies and we've got a, a perfect option here we've got a 17 year old uh, princess who is the daughter of king charles ii of west francia which is modern day france uh, we're playing at 867 uh, so you know, the nations aren't what we know them today uh, but we're going to go ahead and send that proposal out uh, and then we have three issues we have some wars we could declare i like the way they do the fabrication of claims now it's not quite the same how it worked before was you would send, say, your chancellor to fabricate a claim, and you had such and such a percentage chance every year of fabricating that claim. Doesn't quite work like that now. Uh, now, basically, what you do is you send your chancellor. Uh, in this case, we can actually send our uh, send our bishop to do this, uh, to fabricate a claim. And then there's a percentage uh, that you have to get to of progress. And once it hits 100, you'll be able to press that claim. I like that a lot more than the way it used to be because you know exactly when it's going to happen. So then the next thing we want to do is we want to take a look. And um, I love that your spouse is a member of your council now rather than having to be appointed to the council in a particular position. Uh, we can appoint each of our council members to do different things. Uh, I think we're going to go to foreign affairs. Uh, and we're going to send this councilman uh, to work on foreign affairs with the Kingdom of Wessex, I think, is what we'll do. Oh, just foreign affairs in general. You don't actually have to pick an area to do that. Collect taxes, increase development in the county. Let's do that with our steward. Uh, spy master. We're going to find secrets for now. And then our marshal is going to train commanders. Let's do that. Greetings, Prince Howell. I gladly accept your marriage proposal. You will be joined with my daughter, Ermintrude, in holy matrimony. May God grant you long life and many children, signed King Charles the Bald of West Francia. Excellent news. Uh, and now our heir is also unmarried. So we're going to go ahead and mar marry off. We do have a son. He's a cowardly lackey. That's not promising because that's who I will become uh, when this is over with. So uh, do I have any other children is the question. Let's take a look at our family. We do have other children. 
Uh, Arthphael is the oldest, followed by Owain, uh, who's also unmarried, and uh, so is Reese. Uh, so we have to marry off all of them. It looks like we have good relations with all of them. I also have a half-brother who's a knight. Knights are a new thing in this game, which I absolutely love. All right, so let's marry off our son. Alliance power. Well, obviously, we're not going to marry him off to a four-year-old. So let's see what options we have among the eligible, actual old enough to get married ladies. Now we've got uh, the Infanta the Visigoths. So she's foreign culture, tribal. Is she even Christian? She may not be. Has claims on the following titles. Okay, let's do it. Uh, some of these, when you marry into them... Um, all children of this house will be born into my of this marriage will be born into my house. Chance of children medium. Um, when you marry uh, folks who are of other religions, you can actually convert them. I think even convert them to your culture. All right, there's another acceptance of a marriage proposal. So those are good things. Wedding celebration with my marriage to Princess Ermintrude. Uh, the realm expects us to throw a suitably extravagant wedding celebration. It is well within my right to collect a royal aid duty as part of this, but some may consider it tasteless to levy an extra tax during a time of jubilation. Uh, so, of course, I will collect it. It will be 75. We can gain 350 prestige uh, by not collecting the duty. We're not going to collect it. We want to get off on a good foot uh, with our people. Piety is something I definitely want to level up. And you can actually see they do hit certain levels. Uh, so piety can go, right now I'm dutiful. I can get to faithful next. Prestige, I'm very close to being distinguished. Uh, and then monthly income. Of course, if I was pursuing uh, a stewardship strategy, I'd probably make a lot more money. Renown, we're very close to being reputable. So these are all important things. My total soldiers right now, six knights, 1,146 levies of high quality. And we have four out of the five holdings that are possible for us to hold right now. All right, so this is going to be our first option to be able to start working on our martial skill. While studying the tactics of ancient generals, I was inspired when I learned about Constantine's victory at the Battle of uh, Milvian Bridge. The night before the battle, Constantine dreamed that a victory would be granted if he painted Cairo, a symbol of Christ, on his soldiers' shields. He did exactly that, and the next day he overran the forces of the usurper Maxentius, who fell into the Tiber River and drowned. The wicked are no match for God's armies. I can gain the trait Holy Warrior. I've got to be careful about the stress level, because if you gain a certain amount of stress, uh, that becomes an issue. I'm going to go for Flexible Leader. I like that idea. All right. Mayor Fernfail has been showing off a promising new recruit. He may not be of noble stock as you, my liege, but on my name I swear that Kinrig... Now, I, I, I'm going to apologize ahead of time. Though I and my wife have Welsh heritage, I am not the best on Welsh pronunciations. I'm learning them, but I know I'm going to butcher some of these, and I apologize to any of our Welsh viewers for not properly pronouncing things. And if you can correct me, I would appreciate that. Uh, please feel free to do so in the comment section. All right. Very well. Bring him to the castle. A new claimant. Of all the buffoonery I've ever seen in Mayor Powell's inane efforts to improve my relations with my neighbors, my good-for-nothing chancellor has officially acknowledged Prince Rodri's claim on the lordship of Brecknock. Supposed to make friends, not enemies. So you can see here we're getting very close to fabricating our claim on this county. Uh, let's see. Gain 50 martial lifestyle experience. All right. So we're about to do that. And then it's going to cost us some gold to be able to press this claim once it hits 100. So we'll go ahead and see that. Oh, call to war. Oh, boy. I'll accept. I'm really not going to fight in that war. But I need to stay on good terms with my allies. Let's go ahead and finish this claim. All right, to the benevolent hot howl, I have prowled through documents both ancient and of less certain provenance. I have finally enough material to make the case that you are the rightful lordship of Carmarthenshire. Uh, all that's missing is one little bribe. See it done. 99 gold to make that happen. That's basically all the money I have. But now, we have the claim that we need. Uh, 
No, no, no. We have family. Oh, I gotta finish marrying off my brother and my other sons. Uh, but uh, do we have the claim? I don't think we have the claim yet. Okay, looking here at my screen, I do in fact have that claim. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and declare war to make that happen, and that's gonna, I think, give us enough to be able to create the duchy right there. Um, all right, declare war. I'm gonna figure out how to do this. Yeah, so that was the war that I was looking for. And we're going to press our claim. Let's pause for just a second. Oh, he's got a pretty small force. I should be able to handle him. It's going to take me some time to raise my levies, though. There they are. I've got a pretty fast speed going. I'm going to have to slow that down. Okay. Now, I like the, the battle system. It, there's some, been some improvements to how that's done. There we go. So now you're going to see. Let me pause it for a second. There are no men at arms. Uh, we have 1,064, uh, including six knights uh, against 354. He does have an advantage, which means his damage is increased, which means he's going to do more damage than me. But in the long run, I'm going to win. And what's cool about this is when the battle's over, you actually get to see how many men... Uh, your knights killed so like there our knight mayor peter killed one of their knights uh you get to actually see that in the results this is really cool looking at the details so here you go our knights you can see how much prowess they have uh there's actually the name of every one of those knights and i, l I just love that little detail uh one of their knights was killed in the battle uh, one was wounded. So that's, you know, I just, little things like that just immerse you so much more into the fight. And I just absolutely love that. All right. As we are going to go ahead and start laying siege to Carmarthenshire, uh, Carmarthenshire, uh, we've got our first perk available. Uh, and the causes belly uh, cost, causes belly cost is down 50%. And that's going to unlock all three of these. And that'll be the next thing that we go for. Uh, naval speed, siege weapon effectiveness organized march i like that one uh and then the toughness of cavalry and skirmishers those are all really nice perks to have but for now we're gonna go ahead and lay siege let him do that he don't think he's got the manpower to do it and another thing that's cool now is if you remember if you're familiar with crusader kings 2 uh, if you had a county and everything was kind of at the county level and above uh, you could look on your county screen and you would see the holdings underneath, the cities, the bishoprics, etc. You can actually see the borders of those within your county now. So here's the borders of the city uh, of Land Midfree. Uh, here's the, the barony of Kyrfidden. Uh, so you can kind of see all of those things. And just again, just little things like that I really like. And I love how smooth the map goes in and out. That's kind of a feature that most games are implementing these days. So we'll finish our, oh, there's our victory. Oh, that was the other war that was going on. Oh, we're not actually laying siege because I don't think. We got to go here and lay siege to this city. There we go. So there's the daily siege pro progress. It may take up to seven months. It may, na may not take quite that long. Oh, who was captured? How was I captured? Oh, because I wasn't with the army. He marched in and, and took my capital. All right, not a big deal. Free once more. My son and heir has been released from his imprisonment and is free again. Oh, we lost because he took our capital. So that's interesting. That's not how this used to go. It's, it's important that I know that because had I known that was the case, I would have pursued his army. But now we know. Now we know how it goes. Uh, let's see. Two of my uh, courtiers, three of my courtiers were killed during the Siege of Penfro. Wow. So that was brutal. Did he execute him afterwards? I wonder who he killed specifically. My sons are all okay. My brother's okay. It was just some of my other courtiers. All right. Lesson learned. Uh, don't let him take your capital even while you're besieging his. Okay. Okay. So as... We are once again fabricating that claim. Uh, we have a raid going on that we're going to have to deal with. And this is something that's going to be a regular part of life. Um, because 
we are in the Viking age, and that's just a reality right now. So uh, I'm also looking at my issues here. I'm in debt, low county control. Uh, we've got to get these brothers and, and sons married off. But let's go ahead to our military, raise our armies, and deal with this raid. He sees me coming, so now he's running. But I've got speed on my side. There we go. We caught up, caught up to him. Going to lose a lot of men in the process. These guys are tough fighters. Reese has been murdered. Oh, my gosh. So one of my kids was murdered. We're going to have to deal with that as soon as this fight's over. Actually, I guess we have to deal with it now. He did not deserve this. Wow. And that wasn't even the good son, was it? All right, so we recovered raid loot. Now we've got to disband our army. Cannot disband while enemy armies are around. Okay. All right, let's take a look and see what happened here. I've got to look at this issue of the murder and figure out who did it. Okay, he wasn't actually murdered. He was actually killed in the battle. Uh, killed by Vikings. All right, so that's a little different than being murdered. He actually died in the battle. So that's an honorable death, really. But still very sad. All right, time to marry off my half-brother. Let's look for the one who's going to, uh, again, give us the most alliance power. Because that's going to be huge early on. But we've got to find somebody he can marry now as opposed to somebody who's going to marry down the road. Because he's already, you know, he's not... He's not a kid. There's not a lot of good choices for alliance power until we get here to the Dutch. Uh, yeah, let's go with that. All right. May St. Bridget bless their union. Now my son. Let's go for prestige gain. Again, we got to go down a ways here. Man, nothing really good, unfortunately. How about we sort by relevance, I guess? We'll go all the way to the top. We'll marry it into the French. All right, let's do it. Excellent. Our fabrication of our claim is once again, it's about halfway there. But it's going to really put us in debt to have to fabricate it a second time. All right, this is really bad, bad news. Uh, because our powerful Welsh northerners just laid claim and, and looks like they won a victory. Uh, and took the territory. Or did they take it? They didn't take it from me, did they? It just changed to a color like mine. Oh, boy, that's going to make it much more difficult to lay claim to this. Because he's, well, he hasn't won the battle yet, I don't think. Uh, it seems like every time I'm about to finish a claim, my allies call me to war. But again, I'm not going to be fighting in that one. What is this? To the false Prince Howell, I'm re willing to release Princess Ermature. Does she ha He has my wife? I didn't even realize. And she's an evil zealot, by the way, in case you were wondering. <laughs> we don't have any children yet, but I already have an heir, so it's not a huge deal. Um, 29. E no, because I'm about to go to war with you. Yeah, I hope that doesn't put me at odds with them, because that's going to be really, really bad if it does. Let's find out here in a second. All right, see it done. Now we're 61 gold in debt. But let's go ahead and get this war declared. No, I don't want to declare war on the Jarl. Well, two big things just happened. One is we gained a point for our strategy focus, but the bigger problem is that now uh, we have had war declared on us 
by our powerful northern friends. So we need to raise our army, but that is not going to be enough. I, I'm desperately... He's got 1,400 men in his army. Uh, they're well supplied. It's a pretty powerful force. Nine knights there. What I desperately need are some allies right now. Are there anybody that I can call as allies? Where are my allies? All right, here we go. So let's look at our allies real quick. King Charles the Bald of West Francia. I desperately need his help. Is it possible to even get it right now? I don't know that I can call him into the war. Okay, here we go. You will accept. Oh, please. Please send troops. Both of you. <laughs> of course, they're going to remember that I did not send troops when called. Ah, oh, I hope. Please, please send help and send it quickly. This is why you marry powerful friends. For such a time as this. Oh, thank goodness. Look at that. The Santillians just sent a big force. We're going to have to get up there and help because otherwise they may lose. Oh, boy. But here come Oh, here comes 5,000 French soldiers. Yes. Just in time. Oh, too bad I sent my troops in when I did. Wow, does it help to have a father-in-law like that. I'm surprised he didn't come sooner considering his daughter has been imprisoned. Hopefully he's going to help us deal with that now. He took, uh, so I took Prince Rodri's uh, son Tudwell hostage during the siege of Cardigan. All right. I don't think we can declare war on any of these other folks right now, but maybe, and I don't even know what we'll be able to get out of this uh, war, but since we've got these troops, we might as well use them. He has no army at the moment. He just got his butt whipped. Oh, he did have an army there. Oh, no. Oh, that's Rise of the Scots. I thought something happened to... My brother died. Oh, he was killed in war. I gotta stop risking my family's lives like this. My brother, Arthfail, and Rico, a commoner, were slain during the Battle of Marineth. Was that, was that two of my knights? Sorry, I apologize. I'm kind of all over the place. I'm still learning how all this works, but... Um, yeah, jeez. Here's the other battle here. All right, so the West Frankian army basically went over to Dublin and left us to deal uh, with an army that's besieging my capital. So I'm hoping that these guys will get there in time to help out because otherwise I can't defeat these guys on my own. Even combined, it's going to be tough. But if they take my capital, I'm done. I'll automatically lose this. I've got a new perk available. Okay, let's hope we can do this. As soon as his army arrives here, we're going to move south and hope he follows. Get down there, please. Hurry. Okay. It's, it's not going well. The advantage is huge in his favor. Part of that's because I'm in debt. I think I'm going to lose this battle. Because we're just going to run out of men. Oh, boy. But he won't have enough men to besiege, even if he does win. Okay, we beat him. Wow! That was brutal. So they're pursuing him. Now I've got to somehow get my forces built back up. My forces captured uh, the mayor. Okay, that's cool. Okay, another battle. And it uh, looks like, once again, we have a slight advantage. Just enough. Oh, boy. It's going to be really close. I think he might win this one. One of our knights was killed. Oh, jeez. We desperately need the West Frankians to come back, but I don't know that they're going to. I think we may be in a situation where we're probably going to have to push for a white piece. Oh, there's another battle going. Who's this fighting down here? 
Well, my my perverse wife, Princess Ermintrude, has been released from her imprisonment. But the uh, the fight does not go well for us. Who was that? Oh, that was the uh, that was the Vikings fighting there. Unless the the West Frankians return, I really have no chance of being able to win this war. So um, we're gonna have to fill our council position. I think we're gonna probably have to push for a white piece and just try to build up our forces again. So I keep the contested title, but everything else stays as is. Oh, he wants to offer me 50 gold uh, to get his wife back, because I have her. Huh. I don't know if I want to do that or not, but I'll go ahead. I could use the money right now. Another available perk. Um, yeah, siege weapon effectiveness, 40%. That works. We actually have three more prisoners that can be ransomed. We captured a bunch. Uh, yeah. Let's just uh, rake in the money from ransom. This was a common thing. The ransom that was paid for Richard the Lionheart when he was captured, returning from the crusade, was like the equivalent to, I think, several days or several years of income for the whole nation. All right, well, suddenly we're rolling in the dough, and that's going to come in really uh, handy because we're going to use that money if we ever have to go to war with him again. Uh, but we're going to start right now. I've got to start thinking about um, a men-at-arms regiment that's going to help me. Uh, it's not going to be cheap, and I don't know how much it's going to cost to maintain, but I feel like it's going to be really helpful moving forward to have. Uh, let's go ahead and get some light horsemen. Uh, so that's going to give us uh, 100 cavalry. We start with five soldiers and we'll reinforce to 100. Full maintenance is 0.85 a month. We're making two a month, so we can handle that. And I'm going to need all the soldiers I can get uh, to go up against this massive uh, domain that we're fighting against, especially if I don't always have the relationships with places like West Francia. Oh my gosh, everybody wants a piece of this title that I'm trying to take. Now it looks like the Vikings have, have laid claim to it. So if I want to take it now, I've got to fight them. But maybe, just maybe, that gets these guys off my back. And maybe I get them to fight with me to go after the Vikings. So uh, we're going to go ahead and see if we can declare this war. We have few knights. We need some more knights. Ah, oh boy. I don't like the fact that my sons are knights, especially in these bloody wars that I've been fighting. Uh, how many are we up to now? Do we have all 100 of these? We do have 100 light horsemen now. I feel like I'd like to create one more military unit, uh, one more men-at-arms unit before we do that. And let's do some bowmen. That's going to pretty well wipe us out financially. But once we get that up to speed, we're going to go ahead after this chieftain Hrogdar. Uh, to be able to take this land back that we've been laying claim to since the beginning of this episode. Okay, so we're going to do it for our claims, although a holy war for the county uh, might actually might get people on my side. But let's go ahead and do this. Now we're claiming it from the Vikings. We're going to raise our armies, which now include these bowmen. And, of course, you can see the enemy allies that are joining the war. We're going to have to call our allies. Hopefully, they will join. Thank goodness they will. Give them a chance to fight against some Vikings. Thank you. Thank you. Good to have powerful friends. I haven't seen... Oh, here comes his army. But here come the friends' armies, too, I think. Nope. That's the enemy. Let's take a look at the next available perk that we can get. We could go for something over here. Stalwart leader, prowess, that'll be good. Living off the land. Let's go for stalwart leader. Where are the friends? Okay, the friends are here. The West Frankians have sent their forces. 
we have the protection we need now to be able to see this through. What do we know, still need to do to win this? Nope, not yet. Well, after all of that, my wife, Princess Ermintrude, is bearing my child. The evil zealot is going to have a spawn. <laughs> so I don't know how I feel about that because I'm not sure that I want my... Sad she's sadistic? She's wrathful. She's an intricate web weaver. She's pregnant. And she's zealous. She's basically... She's Cersei Lannister. That's who she is. Oh, there's some bad news. My wife, Princess Armatrude, assures me it is the way of life, but her hand lingers on her belly. The child was not meant to be. So, uh, we lost the child. Not an uncommon occurrence. Certainly even today, but back then, much more common. We just can't seem to finish off this war. Okay, there, we're at 100%. So, at long last, we have finally, finally claimed that title. And with that, I think I'm going to wrap up this first episode because that whole episode was about that. We haven't even begun to explore things like research. Uh, we haven't explored uh, religion and all of that aspect of things, the culture. Uh, we've got, of course, we can look at our, uh, our dynasty uh, and everything that goes along with that. So a lot still to explore in this game, but you've at least seen the beginning stages of it. Let me know your thoughts. What do you think I should be focusing on? Uh, should I continue to build up my army? Should I focus on other things? Should I be preparing the next generation? Uh, use the comment section below. We'll be back again soon with some more content. I'm going to be playing this for a long, long time to come. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.